It is a wild Wednesday on the Jeff Bay Show. We're live at Bennett's Chop and Rail House. We have been for the last, I believe, four Wednesdays now. I just finished off my sirloin in my house, chopped salad, fantastic as always. But it is um, just a crazy, crazy time right now in hockey, in the hockey world, especially here in the state of Minnesota. The Wild on fire. They get two points in St. Louis. They pick up two more last night in Nashville. Not a lot of teams doing that right now in the National Hockey League. But as we do like to focus on the college game as well, and the NCHC frozen faceoff coming to town, we got the Big Ten tournament going on in Detroit starting tomorrow, the WCHA Final Five across town. So it is hockey frenzy time right now in the state of Minnesota. And joining us to, 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 to break it down specifically with the NCHC is our guy Dave Starman, joining the show for a second time. Dave, thanks again for your time. Oh, you're welcome. And by the way, you got the women's frozen four over at Ritter going on here in yes. the state of hockey. Yeah, then nice of me to forget that. I mean, it's uh, the, the Gophers just <laughs> all they did was rack up what 52 shots on goal and a six to two win over RIT uh, last week to convincingly put their stamp on their frozen four ticket. So I mean, it is, it is, and it, of course, last week we had the high school uh, hockey tournament here. So I mean, it's it's been just off the hook for hockey in in the state, Dave. And I know you've been. You've been covering college hockey for about a quarter of a century. You've been up and down, you know, the, you know, the East Coast, the Midwest. You've been, I mean, you've been to every state. I mean, does it get much better than, than the upper Midwest this time of the year? I mean, I know folks love their hockey in, the, in, in New England. And I know Michigan, you know, Joe Louis Arena, they got the Big Ten tournament this weekend. But when you talk college hockey, Minnesota, North Dakota, Wisconsin, this part of the country, I, I, I can't find a, a place where you got a, more of a fevered pitch for the sport. I'll tell you what, the Twin Cities and the city of Boston to me are really what, you know, constitutes kind of the hub of hockey when it comes to, when it comes to college hockey. You know, Boston is, is unique because you've got four major Division One programs all within three miles of each other, which is, yep. I think, unprecedented anywhere in the country. But, you know, here in Minnesota, uh, because of the fact that you've got a couple of different programs now at a couple of different conferences, and these conferences are now kind of at each other's throats in terms of competitive edge and you know, bragging rights and that kind of thing, I, I just think it makes a... A really unique situation, and you know, when you think of the state here, you got two teams in the NCHC, you've got one team in the Big Ten, and you've got two teams in the WCHA. And you know, interconference is important for pairwise rankings. Yep. Uh, games between these teams are really important as the year goes on. But you know, you get such a great. But I will say this: when I am in Minnesota, when I'm in the Twin Cities, it is the only place where I can sit in a restaurant and hear people talking about the pairwise. That doesn't happen <laughs> in Boston. And it does not happen in Detroit. Yeah, and I tell you what, we've been uh, we've been a little crippled by that pairwise this year. If uh, if you're a fan of the maroon and gold, I mean, I think they've climbed up to 11 or 12, probably safely on the inside. But they're not going to do any more climbing, you know, uh, this week at the Big Ten because they're playing some some lowly ranked squads. But that that is not the situation in the NCHC, where last week you had a team ranked third in the pairwise that had to go on the road for the first round. That's how good this league is. It's it's you know the the, the interconference record is what is what made the the league's so good, but the, you know the other thing is this: when you when you've got eight teams, you know every game is is huge and every game is is tough to win. I mean, you know Colorado College might not have a great record, but you know they're pretty competitive and and they're no pushover. I mean, they did get blown out a couple of times, but you, know, you talk to the coaches around the league, and you know CC kind of makes you bring it. And you know Western Michigan to me is as a hard and out as you could possibly run into, as Miami found out in the three game series. Against them, and Western had a couple of good runs during the course of the year that you know they had people thinking that you know they might climb a little higher in the standings. But it's amazing when you talk to the coaches in the league. The one thing that they will tell you is, you know, unlike in some of their past conferences, there's not a team in the conference where they've got a, a 750 or 800 winning percentage against. You know, back in the, the old WCHA or the old CCHA, you know, a lot of these teams. Yeah, granted, you face the upper echelon teams in the conference, but there are also some bottom feeders. There are there are no bottom feeders nope. in the NCHC, and that's what makes this conference and a lot of these teams so battle hardened going into the national tournament. From from a league perspective, you just wonder if they've knocked each other around so often that they've worn each other out come national tournament time. But I think you're going to see you're going to see five of them in there for sure. Yep. And how funny is it? That, how funny is it that St. Cloud is probably pulling for the Gophers? Like they have never pulled for them before, because if the golfers hold serve and take the auto bid out of the Big Ten, and St. Cloud can win a game here, that puts St. Cloud in the tournament also. Yeah, and uh, there's not a better guy in college hockey than Bob Motzko. Uh, I got to know him when he was uh, the assistant to Don Lucia. Uh, I mean, I'll always n remember Motzko as the guy who delivered Vanek. I mean, he coached Vanek in the USHL, and Vanek was going to follow Motzko, and Motzko came to the U of M, and, and, and the rest was 
was Golden Gopher for history. So Motzko is always going to be my guy for delivering Thomas Maddox. <laughs> but he is, he's, he's, he's salt of the earth. I mean, he's one of the guys in college hockey that everybody pulls for. Uh, you know, much, uh, uh, much like, uh, uh, God, his name escapes me, but the UNH uh, head coach. Just, just guys oh, who... Oh, Dick Humilly. Yes, Humilly. Nobody in the world has a thing, a bad thing to say about Dick Humilly or Bob Motzko. These are just guys you pull for, and the league is so. I mean, with all due respect to UNO, it was good for the league for St. Cloud to win that series. I mean, you got you're gonna have a big frenzied crowd here tomorrow, uh, Friday afternoon, for that first semifinal. Yeah, yeah, you really are. You know, the, the fact that you've got St. Cloud, which is what 80 miles away, and yep. you got North Dakota, whose fans would, you know, they travel to London. If, uh, if, if, yep. if North Dakota was playing there, I mean... Well, London, Ontario. Up. London, Ontario. <laughs> I'm, talking about, I'm talking London, England they travel to. I mean, they'll go anywhere. And, you know, but, you know, I, love, I know a lot of people are talking about how they, they would have loved to see North Dakota and St. Cloud at the late game, being that they're the two teams that will kind of probably bring the, the most fans in. But, you know, on the other hand, when you're North Dakota and you've worked all season long in this conference to win first place and get that extra four hours rest before you have to potentially play a championship game on Saturday night. I think you've earned the right to make a decision that you could play the early game. But, you know, no matter no matter what time North Dakota and St. Cloud play, it could be 8 o'clock in the morning, it's going to be an unbelievable game. And, you know, these two teams are a lot more similar than people think. Both of their defenses are really, really good at generating offense. Their goaltending has been lights out for, for the entire course of the season. Uh, you lose to Bob Moscow. He's a, he's a heck of a coach. As is Dave Axel, their staffs are so detailed and, and well-prepared and you know, when you take a look at the offense, I mean, North Dakota's four lines deep, even minus Mark McMillan. But, you know, St. Cloud, their top six can be as explosive as any top six in the conference. And, you know, I look at guys like Jimmy Murray and Joey Bennick and, and Johnny Barzinski and David Morley. I mean, they, they've just got a great crew up front and, and a hell of a defensive center in Kelly Kosolo, who, who I think the world of, especially playing his own end. So, I mean, this one, this one shapes up to be a really, really good nip and tuck kind of game. Hey, Dave, this is uh, Tony Dean. I write for Hockey Buzz, um, and I write about the Minnesota Wild. And, and one of, one of the uh, players that, that's going to be in this tournament, I believe you also covered him with uh, uh, in, in the World Juniors, and that's Louis Belpedio. Can you talk a little bit about uh, this young man and, and his impact? Oh, you know, the one thing that he does so well is feel pressure and make good decisions in his own zone. And you, you can tell that this is a kid who has played some high-level hockey before he got here and has, and has some experience playing against collegiate teams. and you know, I like I like the puck he dumped it on the side. He's able to go back and keep a, a look over his shoulder and get a puck and make a play. And like I said, he feels pressure whether or not he wants to move puck to the side or move the puck up the wall. He's got a really nice ability to make an offensive-minded play from his own zone. And I, I think as a as a freshman player, especially in this league with, with some of the speed that's coming at you, you know, that's been pretty impressive. And, you know, Miami's done a really good job with their defensemen in recent years. And Brent Brecky is the, the guy who runs their defense with you know, think about some of the defensemen that have come through Miami recently, whether it be Steve Spinell or Cam Schilling or Will Weber or Alec Martinez. I mean, they, they, they've had some great ones that have that have come through the past few years, and, you know, Delpedio might be kind of the next in line. And Matt Cato, his defense partner, has been really good for him also as a stabilizing influence. But, you know, this kid at some point could turn him into the best defenseman in the NCHC. You know, Dave, my follow-up question, uh, this, this group of uh, freshmen that built, uh, Bob Motzko has in, in St. Cloud State, um, we had him on last week, and we got to talk about um, just just the, the the contributions that they've made. Do you think that they can sneaky knock off North Dakota here on Friday? You know, that's a really good question. And in you know, with these games, these, these one-offs, I don't put anything past anybody. And we talk about those freshmen. You know, Winicky is Winicky's a kid. He's a big rig. He's pretty explosive and gets to the net. And and I, and I like his hands. And you know, Russell's another kid who who I think for a big man is pretty agile, pretty aggressive, and, and has been a nice compliment to any line that he's been on during the course of the year. And, and, and with him, the defenseman and has got a nice ability to move pucks up the ice, take a puck with him, get across the blue line, make a pass, stay in the play, join the rush, and, and create some offense inside the blue line. You know, can, can, can St. Cloud State beat North Dakota? I think anybody can beat anybody. Uh, the one thing I will give North Dakota is every time that they have been pushed to the bending point, they haven't broken. They're the only team... In this conference, I haven't seen not break yet when they have faced a tremendous amount of adversity. So to me, you know, that is, is the intangible factor that I give North Dakota both in, in their semifinal game and if they win that, their final game, and even moving forward into the national tournament. They, they, they pass the eyeball test, and they, they just kind of have the it factor, if you know what I mean. Hey, hey David, I, I, let me go off the board for just a second and ask you just something Big Ten related because – 
the conference is, is really a mess, and it's a shame because it's, it's just at its inception. But what's it going to take to get schools, you know, traditional programs like Michigan State, Wisconsin, uh, you know, back up where they belong? I mean, Michigan is, is, is an offensive power this year. They're not far off, but Wisconsin is miles away. Uh, you know what? That's a really good question. And I think that when you, when you take a look at the Big Ten, you know, take a look at the programs that are in it. And, and the thing that hurts the Big Ten, I think, is the fact that they're a 16 league. I, I think with more teams in your league, you've got a little bit better of a chance for success, as, as we just talked about with the, the eight teams in the NCHC. But, you know, on the other hand, when I look at the Big Ten and what they look like this year, you know, Michigan's got a lot of top end talent, and, but their goaltending hasn't been very good. Michigan State has got high-end goal standing, but their talent level is not as high as other teams. You know, Minnesota's been up and down. They've, they've had some injuries, and I think people have kind of questioned their toughness a little bit. Um, Ohio State, you know, I just I just don't ever think Ohio State's athletic department is ever going to value Ohio State hockey the way that they value football and basketball. Yeah. So I kind of think that, you know, they're always kind of working behind the eight ball. It's, it's not their hockey program's fault. It's just kind of what the what the reality is. Their barn's too big. I, you know, their, their barn's too big. You can't play in that building with 3,000 fans. Oh, there's no question. I mean, unless Michigan's there, it's, you know, if you get your own section. And I've always thought yep. that was a problem. And, yep. you know, if they could build a 5,000-seat arena on campus. They got resources. And pack the place and make it, the, you know, like, I mean, think about, like, when Michigan State was really, really good back in the Ron Mason era. Mm-hmm. And they played at Mon Arena. I yep. mean, there was a demand for that ticket. And yep. the fact that there was a demand for the ticket made the ticket that much more valuable. And I think if Ohio State can get to that point, you know, you got something going. Yep. Penn State, to me is the team of that conference to keep an eye on. Because I think with Guy get out and coaching that team, the brand name that Penn State has, the arena and the facilities that they have, the staff that they have, I think Penn State, if they do this the right way, and I have every reason to think that they will, Penn State could run the Big Ten for years to come. Really? Better than Minnesota? Uh, uh, I think they can be just as equal as Minnesota for a couple of reasons. Number one is their recruiting grass is really, really good. Guy Gadowski is a Western Canadian. And it's got that great pipeline mm-hmm. in the Western Canada. Plus, don't forget, he coached at Fairbanks. So, I mean, he's, yep. he's developed a lot of relationships. You know, out the British Columbia Junior League, the Upper League, the Saskatchewan League. He's got a, a deep seated amount of contacts when it comes to Western Canada. And then, you know, through his staff, you know, they've got their connections into the, into the Eastern Junior League. They've got their connections into the USHL and the North American League. I mean, they, their group kind of runs far and wide. I think they're a really young, hungry, progressive staff with a lot to prove to people, including themselves. They've got tremendous facilities. They, they are, you know, I know football and basketball are a big deal, but hockey at Penn State is a really big deal. And in a small community like that, that might be just enough to draw in that kind of player who wants to be the big fish in a small pond. So, you know, I, I think just with the, with the way that, that program has started and the way things are moving, they could, they could be a team that could really run the table for many, many years. And that's not taking anything away from the programs that are there. That's just more of a compliment to it. There's somebody like sure. Kodowski and his sure. staff. Hey, Dave, in closing, am I uh, correct in assuming that uh, the ESPN family and networks has got you going somewhere for a regional uh, in a couple of weeks? No, actually, you know what? I'm really lucky. I've got the selection show on Sunday okay. at, uh, at noon. John Buchagross and I on Sunday at, at noon on ESPN. He's the best. And then once the regionals start, I'm the luckiest guy on the road because I'm in studio in Charlotte for the oh, regionals. So I get to fantastic. see the game. And comment on every game and break them down. And I, I, you know what? It's I, I love being a game analyst at the games. Don't get me wrong. Yep. But for the region, no better place. I'll tell you right sitting now. Sitting in studio. Yep. All the games, all. As a college hockey fan, Dave, the best day of the year, bar none, is the Saturday of the regionals because you've got all four going on. It is, it is the best college hockey day of the year, bar none. There's no question. And if you own a coffee place in Charlotte, it's a great place to be because I'm probably there every hour just to keep my eyes open because it's from <laughs> noon to midnight. So it's, it's a great day. Yep, it is. It is fantastic. Thanks a lot, Dave. Appreciate your time, and uh, I hope I get a chance to meet you this weekend here in Minneapolis. That sounds great. Thanks for having me as always. Thanks, Dave. Dave Starr, man, he is uh, the really preeminent college hockey expert in the country, and he's lucky enough that he gets to sit next to John Butchergrass on Sunday. Is, is there, when it comes to ESPN and hockey, guys, is there anybody cooler than Butchergrass? I, mean, just, I just love him. I mean, uh, He's I got sick mitts. Nationally and, and just... His knowledge base and his use of social media. Yep, I think oh, he genius. is. He is a genius. Yep, you have any did Is his, isn't his a uh, Twitter handle college hockey like with a C A W L or something? He, it's, yeah, it's filtered out to a clothing line now too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the, the overtime challenge and all that stuff. I mean, yeah, he's Butcher Grass is the best. And it, it, not to mention, he's just hilarious, quick witted, funny. He's just a, he's a great anchor. And there's no douchery with him. He no. doesn't. He doesn't do the big time. He nope. no, he doesn't big time anybody. Nope. 
I love it. I'm about to douche her you. So you step <laughs> aside, Tony. We got we got other stuff. We got bigger fish to fry. Proud of you. <laughs> we we got to get our first break in here. It's a wild Wednesday. We are at Bennett's Chop and Railhouse. It's on West Seventh. It's just east of 35E. You know, just down the road from that SA. You know what we're talking about. You can get a shuttle from uh, here to any uh, Twin City sporting event. Including the uh, games uh, this weekend, I would imagine, that uh, the NCHC and the WCHA playoffs going on right here in town. When we come back, we're going to talk some Minnesota Wild. We're going to give away some tickets, and we're going to visit with our buddy Joe Bennett. He's a little sad. His Bulldogs aren't coming to town this week. Uh, Sandlin's coming down. He's going to be here to watch it. you got to at least have Sandlin over for a free steak, right, Joe? Yeah. All right, well, we'll discuss it after the break. Hi, everybody. This is Alyssa. And this is Liz. And we're with The Focus Radio. Where our focus is to bring you resources to grow your business and double your income. Join us on Mondays from 3 to 4 p.m. Central Time. TheFocusRadio.com. What are you drinking tonight, Jason? The Minnesota Pubcast with Jason and Molly. I'm drinking the Lithbridge Hop Dish. It's pub talk from a Minnesotan perspective. I'm always really proud of where I'm from. I'm super proud of Minnesota, and I think Minneapolis is awesome. I think St. Paul is awesome. I think they're a really awesome cultural epicenter. With great local guests. So the other voice you hear in the room today is uh, Jerry Fagerberg from the City Pages talk about the uh, official Minnesota tall boy, which uh, your piece is on the cover of the City Pages. Today. It is on the cover. came out today. Talking movies. All right, you saw Boyhood. I need to hear what you thought. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. Sports. A guy who was undrafted knew what was coming. And everything else you talk about at the pub. Let's not pretend we know what we're talking about. Well, what do you think I do every show? The Minnesota Pubcast with Jason McGovern and Molly Burke. Listen at mnpubcast.com or subscribe on iTunes. We want to just find meaning in life. All right, we're back. We are back. And this is a house of the holy, as far as I'm concerned. Bennett's Chop and Rail House. We're on West 7, just east of 35E. And why is, why is this a house of the holy to me? Because it's a college hockey house. I love this place because sitting two, two, two people to my left is the owner, Joe Bennett, diehard Bulldog fan. To my, to, to my right, well, no, where'd she go? Over there at, at about 10 o'clock, waitress whose name escapes me. Carly. Big, big North Dakota fan, giant North Dakota fan. I'm sitting here with my gopher stuff on. I mean, college hockey is represented at Bennett's Chop and Railhouse. You got the Staylock autographed San Jose Sharks jersey behind the bar. I know you host team dinners here, uh, uh, Joe, for, uh, for the Bulldogs. And I know your heart's a little, a little heavy uh, today with the Bulldogs losing in the first round, but. Uh, fear not, on Sunday when that selection show uh, takes place on ESPN, their name will be called, and they will be a number two seed. I don't know what region they're going to, but they'll be a number two seed and one of the, uh, one of, one of the favorites to get to Boston to, 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 to get to that Frozen Four. So not all is lost, Joe. So that's, uh, turn that frown upside down. I will. That's, uh, Scotty's done a phenomenal job with that uh, program yes. up oh, yes. there. and um, They've been here. Matter of fact, you were talking about uh, this is a college bar. I still have the stains, uh, the beer stains up on the ceiling there. You can see them from right here. You'll never clean them either. Oh, never. That's uh, part of the luck of Bennett's. They've been coming here for six years. They always eat here. I told you this, Jeff. I know it bothers you still, but <laughs> they, they eat here right before they uh, play the Gophers on Thursday. They eat here, yeah. and I've never lost on a well, Friday night. Say, what the hell are you feeding them? Jesus Christ. And I tell you, they eat like they, <laughs> these guys. They eat four courses, no, five courses. All within an hour. I've oh. never. It's just amazing how well uh, uh, how much these kids can eat. They, I'm gonna, well, they need it. I'm gonna get over and slip some you know, like Benadryl or something into the food. <laughs> get them a little sleepy for the game for game day because they they've been doing too well down here. But I know did you had a little celebration here after the uh, Frozen Four at St. Oh. Paul a few years ago too. It, it was uh, it was by far the craziest party uh, that I've been involved with. I've been a Bulldog fan since I moved to Duluth in 1980, and uh, I lived there for 20 years and. Uh, you know, I died by that team. I went to every home game, and when they made it in and then won it in that overtime, mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't get back here fast enough because I'd already worked out a deal where I knew the whole team was going to come down, and uh, we had just an absolute blast. Well, that's where the beer stains on the ceiling are from, you, correct? You got it. Yeah, uh, it was yeah, a lot yeah. of fun. Well, and, you know, my, my nephew, uh, his name's Nathan. He's a 20-year-old uh, sophomore up at uh, Minnesota Duluth, and he's there because he's a big Bulldog fan. I mean, it, 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 he grew up in a gopher family. And he likes to swim upstream. He likes, yeah. to, he likes to be a little bit of a burr in the, under the saddle. He's a rebel. Yeah, he is. So, I mean, and he, and he didn't want to get into, you know, he didn't want to be a, a Badger fan. He didn't want to, you know, jump in that, in that fighting Sioux mess. He just decided, you know what, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stay close to home. 
but just enough to piss off the family. And he, so since he was like eight years old, he's been a diehard Bulldogs fan. Yeah. And I was I was at the uh, Frozen Four with him. Oh. It was the, the, the happiest day of his freaking life. Oh, yeah. I just saw him two hours ago. He's wearing a Bulldog uh, <laughs> Bulldog sweatshirt. And nice. just grinning at me, I said, "You got to come down here, meet Joe. You got to meet Joe. You, this is your kind of place." He, I mean, his his, his idol is Alex Daylock. I mean, it, nice. I, I, well, I, I just it's not nice. I don't. I, 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 I get, you you, you want to adopt the kid? You want to take him off well, our yeah. hands? You know what? As long as he comes to Bennett's and hangs out here, we we take all Bulldog fans in here. We absolutely love him. Put our arms around him. Well, and he's six Welcome. five. He's six five, and he's got oh. a, and he got a mean streak. Okay, good. <laughs> he was a defenseman. So. I might need him. Yeah, Joe, uh, Tony Dean from uh, Hockey Buzz. When, when we were uh, when we were talking about where a, a, a Wild Wednesday show should be hosted, I thought no better place than Bennett's because these are this, this is a hockey community. This, this is this is a, a, a restaurant bar, West Seventh area that has always supported college hockey, and and now with with the Wild on the verge of, of, of a playoff push that that could lead to Lord Stanley's Cup, I think no better place to talk hockey than than here at Bennett's. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh you know, we've been uh, here for nine years now, and, you know, we're a great neighborhood bar, but from the get-go, one of my goals was to provide a shuttle service down to the XL. Um, the first year, we did a charter. That you drive yourself, yeah, right? Yeah, and then, and then now we, we, bought a, we bought a shuttle bus uh, that we had for five years. It held 14, and I swear to God, I had 50 in it every single time. <laughs> And uh, so, been on that bus. yeah, and then two <laughs> two years I ago, two. yeah, two years ago we we got a bigger bus. Now we got a an old uh, Bluebird, but it's a great bus and it seats twenty six. You get twenty seven. You know, we we all we fill it and it's standing room only. So it's a you know it's a great uh, it saves people money on parking down there and mm -hmm. that uh, craziness of down by the XL and you know we provide them with some uh, good food prior to the game and then some lively drink after. So it's a lot of fun. We and love. Love hockey. We got a former employee of yours here. Yeah, actually, study. the funny thing is I, the, the way I found Bennett's is when I lived in Woodbury, a friend of mine lived right down the street, and we'd come down here before games, have some drinks, hop on the shuttle. My, my buddy Matt always would ask to drive, and Joe would very politely say no. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes not as polite yeah, as anyone and, and would me, like. <laughs> after that, Matt, Matt, was a, Matt was about about five, six beers deep, so no, no reason driving the shuttle at that point. But, but then uh, when I moved down to St. Paul, I mean, I connected with uh, – with Joe, I'm like, hey, if you ever need any bartender, let me know. And it came to be that I, uh, I, I kept bar uh, one night a week for about two years. It was great. Very and then, nice. And then always during the state tournament, we'd take Scotty and his whole Hill Murray oh, I know. Uh, crew up to the oh, – I know. It was so obnoxious. <laughs> it, it, it got so obnoxious I'd have my father-in-law drive so I didn't have to – To the Coliseum. Yeah. I, I dated his sister for three years, so I know oh, I know how the oh, Hill Murray – I mean, oh. they, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, like the dad is right and Pat is right and – like booster club checks. I'm like, it's not a college. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a high school. You guys got to relax. Lots it, of collars up. Lots of hair gels it, cracking up. Well, no, his dad had like laminated rosters. And, and you, his and dad he, had laminated rosters in his wallet. Well, so if, all, and if, <laughs> if Scotty, I'm serious. if he didn't have a real job the next day, Scotty, you know he'd have painted his face green and <laughs> his whole body would have been green and the whole Hill Murray deal. Gotta, in high school, I think I might have. I got a story for you, Joe, because I was this is back in the mid '90s when I was dating his sister. And, and we'd go to his games, and he'd always say, he's going to be a pioneer. I'm going to be a pioneer. I'm going to be a pioneer. We'd go to the Hill Murray games, and I'd point at the mascot with the, with the <laughs> Coonskip cap. I'd say, yeah, you're going to be a pioneer, that pioneer. That's and he was. Yeah. He got to high school. He was the mascot. Well, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I got a lot of character. He's perfect at that. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. He didn't, he didn't lie. He <laughs> said he was going to be a pioneer. <laughs> he made it. <laughs> yes, not, he not A, the. <laughs> yeah, so you even even Smart. exceeded exceeded expectations. You you underestimated yourself. I like that you controlled the narrative on that too. I'm <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> hey, I did, but before we let you go, any I did, what, anything about the, the restaurant specific you want to talk about? But I mean, I've had the sirloin three weeks in a row, and it's outrageous. Good. Oh, uh, it's so you, good. You know what? I'll it put melted our, in my mouth today. It's it's so it's a great steak, and all of our food here. You know, we're just a little neighborhood bar. That kind of surprises people with the quality of our food, oh, and that's what we fantastic. pride ourselves on. Our service is fabulous. We've had staff that have been with us all nine years, and we appreciate them greatly. And uh, it's you know we we try to uh, provide good service for people, and uh, the shuttle. Uh, we've got great weeknight specials. Uh, you know, it's all on our website, uh, www.bennettschoppingrailhouse.com. Uh, you know, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, all of that fun stuff. Uh, we do a lot of uh, giveaways uh, during the Viking season. It's just, you know, we try to have fun here. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to be here every single day, so I'm going to try to make it fun. Sure. Uh, you know, my wife and I are two owners that are always in the – one of us is always here. So 
uh, you know, we appreciate having you guys here. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, we appreciate you having us. And I, uh, we, we love the show. I, do, I really thought that it, it's important for us to get in here and, and do the show from Bennett's because I know about this place because I live four blocks away, and I'm a St. Paul guy, and I worked in the restaurant industry, and I think Bennett's is, is one of the best-kept secrets in St. Paul, but it yeah. shouldn't be. I, right. I, I think people should get out here, they, especially if you're hockey people. If you're hockey people, you should get down here, you know, take a, take a couple steps out of Tom Reed's and come down here and, and have a steak, enjoy the atmosphere yep. here, talk hockey at a bar, at a pub. Where, where people know about hockey. It's not just bandwagon fans, mm -hmm. and I think that that's what you get here, and especially the, the way that you support college hockey, people should know that this is something that you're, you're, you're diehard. You're, you're heart and soul hockey. People. Yeah, I tell you, I, I was, if UMD would have made it down, I was going to have to rent a bus, yes. another bus, because <laughs> sure. I'm going to do the bus this weekend up to the X. And then I would have done it over to the Target Center also just because I'm a diehard Bulldog fan. Sure, so, sure. You know, and I got, I, I was lucky in college. I was good friends with Brett Hall, and I got to be in that whole hockey kind of, um, you know, program where you meet all these guys. Yeah. And Podine, you realize, probably oh, Podine, oh, oh un unbelievable He's a great guy. guy. Oh, Podine's unbelievable. Uh, just the uh, salt of the earth guy. Everything he does has something to do with charity. Right. I mean, and he doesn't get up and out of bed in the morning without thinking of charity. Well, and then he's, I'm serious. he's already coaching his little kid's hockey team, and, you know, he's just... He went from Stanley Cups right to the, you know, might uh, helping out and giving back. So, all of those guys, uh, Tommy Curvers, Norm McIver, yeah, all of those Curvers. guys. I got just to know Curvers a little bit. Billy Watson, good people, good un unreal. Oh, they had, and, and Sertich. I mean, he might be oh, insane, but he's yeah. a hell of a guy. Well, no, he was. He's insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, come on. Well, he was, no <laughs> doubt about it. I mean, I, mean, I could. That whole coaching staff was a little, uh, you know, they're crazy. The last, the last one. I was working for FSN. The last trip I made up to Duluth at the, when the Gophers were playing at the deck. It was oh. a game that, speaking of insane, it's a game that uh, Tyler Hirsch won with an overtime goal. Oh my that, God. that was a cheap shot. I didn't mean that. Right. But, 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 <laughs> but, but, but uh, you know, Scotty was the coach, but uh, this guy comes wandering in, like in hip waders and big old boots and, <laughs> and a big goofy muckluck hat on. I mean, just looking like he just like rolled in out of his fish house. And it was Sertich, and I didn't even recognize him. I'm like, you've gone insane. Well, that's what Duluth does to you, though. <laughs> you become an outdoor and through all those he guys, like that the homeless played, guy uh, from the Canal Park. I, he, he, like, he was probably <laughs> smelting for crying out loud. You never know. <laughs> I'm like Sertich, what happened? What happened to you? Yeah. I mean, this is not the same guy that that, that, yeah. that hurdled himself into the gopher net after the oh, overtime win, right? Which I was there for, it, and well, it's like, I'll never forgive you for okay, it either. Sorry, you bastards. Uh, that's, that's what we do. <laughs> well, oh, have no. you, well, have you guys forgiven Spihar yet? I mean, have you gotten over, over Spihar? Well, you know, Dave it's been was twenty years. That that Duluth East uh, team. What a you know that tournament is still like every time Duluth East makes a back. He, you must have loved this year. You must have oh, had yeah. a blast. Oh, it was. What a gutty it was, team. Yeah, it was. Character team. You know, and I thought just the way that they played on that uh, on Friday night that they had a chance on Saturday, but God, Lakeville looked good. Yeah. Those guys oh, they're, were yeah, awesome. They're machine. And I'll, oh. I'll tell you this. A, a really good friend of mine, who you'll, you'll appreciate, Dylan Mills. I mean, yeah. just salt of the earth guy. He's a fireman up in Duluth. Now, Graduated with my son. And uh, I mean, he played in that game with Westrom, where, where Duluth East got screwed. And West right. Westrom, another good friend of mine, completely insane. But anyway, <laughs> I, di I digress. I digress. I digress. Uh, but uh, but but when when Randolph was 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 uh, going through some struggles up there, you know, losing the job, getting the job back. Yeah. The loyalty that the people people like Dylan Mills. I mean, they did all I needed to know about Mike Randolph was how guys like Dylan Mills felt about him. I mean, yeah. People went to bat for this guy. They love this guy. Oh, without a doubt. Love he, him. He's an incredible coach. And now and he's, not te he's not teaching anymore, so he's got even more time to, to put towards the program. And I think you're going to see Duluth East continue to make it down here. People love that guy. Oh, yeah. I mean, not just as a coach, but as a guy. Yeah, he's a really good dude. How, like, how excellent good is, racquetball player. How good is this conversation? <laughs> Not, not only does Joe Bennett have a business, but he knows about the, the history of hockey. I mean, oh. this is what this is what you go to. He knows Mike Randolph about. can play racquetball. I'm old. <laughs> hey, I, hey, I was working here when that that hockey stick on the wall was signed. I remember that that stuff. Yeah. They're signed by the whole team. The whole team. We, is, that we got, stay, is that a stay lock? Well, the the first one is the stay lock when they won the year before the national championship, where they won the you know the whole uh, WCHA final five, and then the, the uh, other one is the championship team they got the whole the goalie stick signed for me and brought that down what is it with the what, what is it with the italians you guys always get the, the italians i mean the aya follows and the miranucci's <laughs> and the i mean you got these guys with the, the name ends in the I bottle know. I, I, I don't know what it is or yeah uh, they must the go kid to from what's there. the kid from oisetta with the wheels that you just had he, he, he played high school hockey with lucia Oh, I can't. I can't remember his name. Oh, I, I can't either. Oh, I know, but he was. I have followed. No, 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 no. no, no. no oh, damn it! I'll never think of it. I can't either. He was. He, he, uh, he just played for Boisetta with with the, with Tony Lucia just a few years ago, or with Mario. I mean, somebody's got to call. Oh him. God, I'm losing my mind. But you get all these Italian kids. Their names all end in a ball. Oh yeah. 
I mean, or itch. Like, yeah, it's one or the other. <laughs> you probably yeah, shouldn't, but, you shouldn't yeah, say anything. You'd be you, swimming with the fishes. Well, you know, they, they do have a history with the Miskovich family as well. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. That's, and that's a hell of a family. Yeah. <laughs> End up in Superior, huh? All right, th- thanks a lot, Joe. Well, you know what, you guys? Thank you for being here. And uh, what you uh, thanks for pushing Bennett's out there. We really appreciate it. Well, we and, appreciate uh, we, having us. We love having this show here. So look forward to a lot of weeks. It's the only place I can drink out of a pitcher. I like I'm, that. I'm like Belushi in you're, my animal house. You're a diet Coke <laughs> machine. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Anytime. Hey, let's take our last break, and then we'll come back with you know, like a half hour of commercial-free uh, Minnesota Wild nonsense. It's a wild Wednesday from Bennett. Hi, I'm Terry Daniel, and I've been a voice actor in Minneapolis for over two decades now. How often are you getting compliments on your voice? Now is the time to do something about it. If you're interested in getting into voiceovers, please contact me via my website at universalvoicetalent.com. I do want to uh, do due diligence to the NCHC Frozen Face Off, not just because they are a client of ours, but it is a fantastic event, and it is going to be at the Target Center. It's March 20th to 21st, and they've got some fantastic deals right now. Full session ticket packages for all four games start as low as 60 bucks, and they will have single uh, game tickets going on sale February 23rd. You can call 1-888-9-AXSTIX, AXSTIX, or go to TargetCenter.com. Go to the Target Center box office. It's going to be a great event. They've also got you know this uh, fan fest going on. They're going to have live bands. They're going to shut down part of First Ave, part of uh, First Ave there, and have bands on the street. We're going to be podcasting live as part of the event. And if you are coming from out of town, which you know obviously the, you know, the University of Minnesota is no longer in it, so most of the fans who come here are going to be traveling, uh, whether it's from Grand Forks, St. Cloud, Duluth, uh, you know Miami, of Ohio, Denver University, whatever, you're going to want a hotel room. And obviously, there's a wealth of hotel rooms in downtown Minneapolis. As, as great as a, a venue as the X was for these events, uh, you know, downtown Minneapolis has got so much more going on, so many more hotel rooms. And if you go to my Twitter account or my Facebook account, you will find a post or a tweet that shows uh, the, 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 the NCHC Frozen Faceoff coming on March 20th, 21st, and where you can go to book discounted hotel rooms. Because the NCHC got together with the, you know, the Chamber of Commerce and the hotels and, and, and put together some packages where folks can get, uh, get a break on hotel rooms. Just tell them you're coming for the NCHC Frozen Faceoff. But you'll see the link on my Twitter account and my Facebook account. Just click on it, and, uh, and they'll lead you right to, uh, to discounted hotels, which should be a fantastic, fantastic event. We're back. I went home with a I got a Bennett shirt. Bennett shirt. Suck it, McGovern. <laughs> We're back. Wild Wednesday. Talking Minnesota wild hockey. And now we are joined by another guest, uh, Tony Abbott, who is from Hockey Wilderness, correct? Oh, hang on. We got to get that mic going over there. Let's pay attention. Let's pay attention over every every every. every, every. my T-shirt. Oh, I just that's why I gave you a suck it for nothing. <laughs> ah, then he, he went up to me. He got his own T-shirt. But uh, Tony uh, Tony Abbott joins us from uh, Hockey Wilderness. Yep, HockeyWilderness.com. So now, how, how is it that you and Tony get along? But uh, Tony doesn't get along with the other Hockey Wilderness guy. He gets in these embarrassing arguments on Twitter. What's oh, the guy's oh, name? Oh no 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 no. no. The, the, uh, first former, of all, first the of all, the former Hockey all. Wilderness. Guy. Oh okay okay. Let's let's clear this all up right now. What's the guy's name? Uh, I'm not here to talk about who's a penis loaf and who's not. Oh, yeah. He, nice. he shall that. remain nameless. I like that. I like and, that. And you know what? Call that a subtweet. <laughs> what, what, what's, very good that we, what, what's very good that we get uh, Tony Abbott here is, is that the, the Hockey Wilderness guys do a very, very good job of, of adding to the, the content community, especially when it comes to advanced statistics. Uh, I don't believe that there's anybody else... Um, especially the main media websites that, that cover the, the advanced statistical aspects of, of the Minnesota Wild, in addition to being very entertaining, being funny, having a podcast, and being a, a site that is self-sustaining. I mean, we do have a lot of stuff, but uh, I do, I do want to also say that I, I, really, uh, I really enjoy the work done by people all across the Wild blogosphere on gunpuckwild.com. Sure. Um, on Wild Extra, I've got Ben Remington over there. I think uh, I especially love his satirical articles. They're uh, they're very funny. Uh, there's a lot of people doing a lot of really good stuff across the blogosphere. So it's it's not just like oh we're so awesome. <laughs> Even I don't, if we I are. don't think I've ever heard the word blogosphere before. So I have actually I have. I'm not happy about it. You're you're worldly. <laughs> you're worldly. Well, I'm knee deep in nerds is what I. <laughs> uh, it's, but it is it is what it is. You got a soundbite for the nerds thing from uh, from. <laughs> 
Nerd! Yeah. Nerd! Ogre! Nerd! Ogre. Nerd. <laughs> you know you know what's so funny? People get themselves into trouble oh, battling with the nerds online because the nerds can come up with graphs. And they can come yeah. up with, with actual evidence, not just this eyeball Tom Powers yeah. approach yeah. to just making BS up. Yeah, and you're like and trying to get ready because you're going out, but the nerd's got nothing to do, so he's just in his basement, mom's basement, killing you. Yes! Yeah, and oh, then, the worst. And then, of course... Even though he's completely right, you're the cool guy and he's the jerk. So you need to be very careful how you treat, especially uh, wild content uh, creators. We're a podcast. That these guys are bloggers. They have a podcast. I mean, this is the new uh, form of the business, and and I think yeah. uh, people are coming around. You know, I think I think the the the, the beat writers, the the play by play guys. The, you know the the color commentary guys. You have to be very careful what you say to guys on the internet because they will make you look foolish in front of people. We're really vindictive, mean, horrible people who will stop at nothing <laughs> to make our points. Yeah, oh yeah, you're the trolls who live under bridges. I yes. mean, it is what it is. It is what it is. No, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> but, but hey, let's talk some wild because uh, the, the, the wild just did something that not a lot of teams would do. That's take you know two points back to back from St. Louis and Nashville on the road. Not back to back nights, but back to back games. I mean, those uh, those are two elites in the Western Conference. Well, on, on the back end of a back-to-back -back in yeah, St. Louis. Yeah, to start, yeah. yeah, yeah you're, you're right. right. You're right. That's and, a, and that's a mince point. And but. by the way, uh, look, credit to Mikey O here because people keep trying to pick spots to take Dubnik out, and he keeps saying, fuck you, I'm not taking him out. <laughs> and, if, and if he wouldn't have stuck to that in St. Louis, they don't win that game. I think it's a mutual F you. Like, I think Mikey O doesn't want to take him out, and Dubnik's like, you're not taking me out because I continue to put up performances are you him Jack that, Morris? Are, that are ridiculous. He, I mean, there's any goalie has just no right to go in a back to back and put up a performance like he did in St. Louis. I mean, that that is completely out of the realm of any and normal that was goaltender performance. Yeah, it was. Do, do you think it helps him? If we talk about how Suter can play minutes because of his his, his, his uh, like conservation of of energy. I mean, he's not a frenetic player. And he's like he's like a Wisconsin like farm boy, crazy strong guy. Well, that too. But I mean, but you know what I'm talking about. Like he makes it look easy. Like Suter could you know, like, get uh, undressed after a game and not need a shower. I mean, he's just so so cool and under control. Dubnik's almost. I, mean, I wonder if he can play all these games because he is the opposite of Dominic Hasha. I mean, he's quiet feet. He's in control. He's you know squared up. I mean, he just, it, he, it just looks like he doesn't expend a ton of energy. Uh, the interesting point is... Uh, or mental energy, when, even. I think the mental is the bigger thing. Seriously. When they when they acquired him, uh, Scott here called him the savior, which I just... Nailed it. He nailed Double, it. double fist Savage pump Sally right there. <laughs> Savage Dick awesome. Flora. I love it. And then I later had to own I it always. that he is the savior, <laughs> and then I got to see this guy every week. Um, so... Yeah, he, I, he bashed me for that, by I, the way. Oh, just immediate, like, over no hesitation. Yeah, yeah. Devin Dubnik is the savior. It was like my uh, birthday. He didn't even need a graph. No, no graph. But what, I think what we've learned is uh, Dubnik hasn't played as many minutes as as, as most of the t the number one guys in the league. Um, he's not asked to do as much as some of the other guys that are asked to uh, carry their teams. So I think, you know, his workload is kind of not a huge issue going forward, but you would like to get Darcy Kemper in there. I thought there was uh, a couple times uh, opportunities like Edmonton twice mm -hmm. that maybe you put him in the game. Yeah. Um, but Zach Parise had a really good quote that, you know, uh, Devin Dubnik's the kind of competitor like me where uh, you have to force him out of the lineup, and I, and I think that that's what kind of, we've seen so far from, from both Yo and Dubnik in handling the situation. He's also got to need uh, he's going to need more games played if he wants to compete for those Vezina Hart trophies, too. Vezina Hart trophies. Yeah, he's Doobie got a chance, for doesn't he? Does he have a chance? I don't think he has a chance because he hasn't been the number one guy all year, but it, he should be in the conversation. I think He's he got should. an outside shot of being nominated, I think, um, but uh, as for winning, I think Carey Price is just so, has been so good and so crucial for Montreal. Yeah. I, I, I still think if he continues his role, there's no reason that he shouldn't be in the conversation. Because, Absolutely. Because if you're talking about, I mean, maybe the Vesna, okay, you haven't played all year like to the level of a Price or somebody else, but as far as a Hart Trophy is concerned, there's nobody that deserves it more. I mean, there's nobody that has turned a team around no. and has made a, a powerful like MVP statement like he has. It's really interesting when you talk about the Hart Trophy because it, it explicitly includes uh, – most valuable to his team in the in the conversation. So yep. uh, normally, I'm of the mind where the best player is the best uh, player or is the most valuable player. But uh, yeah, if you if you really want to go through that more uh, sort of like okay, we'll take this one guy out and 
if he if the Wild don't make the playoffs without Dubnik, then he's clearly the guy. Then I, I think that that is a very strong case. Hey, before we move on, we've had one guy attentively watching the show. Have you, what, what's your name? Ben, have you been here the whole time? I mean, you've been here the whole time. You've been here since before the show started. Do, 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 do we have any hockey tickets we can give this guy? Do we have something we can give him? No, I want to. Do you want to? How about a question? You got a question or anything? You, you want to chime jump, in? Jump on the air. No, seriously. I mean, this guy's like as loyal and faithful as anybody who's ever like had anything to do with the show. Yeah, he was here 40, gotta, 45 a, minutes ago. Yeah, at least give him a T-shirt. Ben, did you that win? Was left, that was left-handed. I, I, that, I know that was really girlish, but that was left-handed. Ben, throw. did you win hockey tickets last week? Were you our winner? No, no, no we, that we can get him some hockey tickets or a T-shirt. No, I gave him a T-shirt. We get him something. You know what we can guy, do, Jeff? We can like we can plug him. He's uh he's Ben Remington of Gone oh. Puck Wild and uh, and of oh, Wild really? Extra. Oh really? So yeah, go read his stuff. There it is. Give give that plug again. It is Ben Remington of Gone Puck Wild and Wild Extra. Both uh both of them are one word. Doc. All one word dot sure. com, yeah. Awesome, outstanding. I do read your stuff, so. Do you, so how about that? I put, I put a name to a face. Small world, small world. Thanks for you know hanging out and being semi cool. I mean, that's as far as I know. He's way cooler than me. Well, well then, you don't, <laughs> then, then those will swap you out at the break. No, All right, yeah, sounds I'm good. Just, I'm just best. But, but we got shit. it. We got work came in at some point too. Uh, so anyway, uh, the, the the wild, they, they they have the loss at home day and night. But this this again, this is a point that I keep going back to each and every week. They have a loss that just doesn't bother me. I mean, the, the, you can go back to the home loss to Edmonton, where they didn't do anything wrong. They just didn't fucking get it done. It's hockey. I mean, that you know, games like that happen. I had no problem with the game they played against Anaheim. They didn't have a ton of chances. Anaheim's a good team. They can do that to you. It's a one-goal loss. I thought they were the better team. I thought the Wild were the better team in that Anaheim game. But I don't see a game like that and then start thinking, okay, what's wrong? Because it doesn't look like anything's wrong. Then they come back the next night and they win at St. Louis on a back-to-back, where St. Louis had been sitting there waiting for him to get to town. I mean, it's that's because you lose by one goal against a team that is the top of the Pacific. Right, but I, I mean, mean, and it, but, and it has arguably been the top of the of the Western Conference correct. for a good amount of time. But the point being here that losses are not are not signs of symptoms of something great or wrong. And the only okay. reason that people get freaked out about losses now is because we don't lose. Yeah, I mean, we, that's that's the reason. I mean, yeah. if you back up to December. In early January, when we lost, they're like, "Meh, oh, we lost. Yeah, it's it's expected. Yeah, it's it's if we won, they're like, ooh. Well, are your national guys still on them to win the West? I, I mean, I the, the burn sides of the world. I don't. I don't personally think. I mean, the way that Nashville's been playing, there's no way they can win the West. Is Nashville? Is Nashville? I'm not gonna say are Nash, they scared. Nashville's Nashville's fallen out of the I, West and the Central. Are they? I'm not gonna say they're scared to get the Wild, but how badly do they not want to get the Wild? I mean, certainly. Uh, Nobody wants the, the wild. The at wild this point, has, at this point, Nashville's not getting the wild. The wild has had Rene melt down like consecutively, and and just in general, I, I think that uh, that that Nashville team um, tends to lose their composure. If you if you looked at Shea Weber, uh, he he could see the game slipping away, and then he's punching random players, and Suter yeah. scooped him up in a little bear hug and whispered some sweet nothings in his ear. <laughs> and the, hey, the best the best though of that whole thing. I, I, I'm sorry to chime in, but the best of, of the whole Weber bit is I saw Parisi giving him shit in the third. Then it went to OT, and Dumba scored, and before Parisi went to the pile to celebrate, he turned to Weber and basically said, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> like, he basically said, like, hey, have a nice day. We just won. Peace. And like, you know what? By the way, the Wild win at Nashville two weeks ago started this whole mess for them. I mean, they were not cold until that game. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the game that started the slot. And I don't know. I mean, what was it two, three weeks ago? They're missing James Neal. It was when I was in Notre Dame. They're missing yeah. James Neal. They have some injuries, so it's it's not as if you know, it's not as if their season is over or they're they're like a paper champion. I mean, this is still a good team. And they're not a yeah, exactly. They're not a bad team. And and really, when you talk about like no one wants to face the Wild. You could say that about seven other teams in the Western Conference too. There, there is so many good teams in the Western, in the Central Division alone. Like, would you want to go into round one facing the Jets when they get like Matthew Perot healthy and stuff? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good, that's a good point. Well, that kid was going. This well, year. the only concern that too that I have is that do the Wild get to the playoffs having shot their wad? I mean, that happens sometimes. I don't, I don't, I don't think so because the, the competition that you have through the stretch here is so good that you have to be on your game. Yeah. Is you don't have a time to that, take that, a that breath. That doesn't wear you down? It, it, it might, but it keeps you competitive at a level that, that competitors thrive and play up to the level of their competition. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have to take a breath and take a step back and be like, oh, I can put it on, I can basically take the foot off the gas, you're going to continue to play all the way into the playoffs, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to benefit you to have that momentum going into it. Now, how how solidly are the Wild in right now? Because they're 
the top wild card. But beyond that, they have more points than teams that are that are in the top three in the Pacific. So if the Kings move up, if the Kings, if the Kings stay hot, then a shitty team like Vancouver or, or Calgary drops down, and we're still ahead of them. Nah, so it, it just it's, a, it's a moot point. Once you get to the three in the the three in the Pacific, doesn't matter. The three in the Pacific is the three in the Pacific. It doesn't matter how high so or low they saying, are. But but I'm not saying LA is not a threat. I mean, no. people see LA coming in the rearview mirror, but LA's not a threat because nobody they move, nobody's they move a threat, into the top yeah. three, and then Calgary or Vancouver drops beneath you, and you got no worries. Winnipeg is the so it's, it's only, a weird is the system. only threat I think that we have to worry. Yeah, about. it's a weird system. I right? mean, ultimately, what we're looking at is it, it's going to be it's going to be five teams from the Central Division that get in. It's going to be three from from the Pacific Division, and it's going to be the top three. And, Same as last year, and probably a shitty team like Vancouver is going to fall out of the playoffs because although they are a playoff team right now, yeah, um, you've you've been you've been they melt down. Hey, you got your Ryan Miller. Ha ha again. <laughs> they could melt down. Ha ha. <laughs> well, I mean, you called them a non-playoff team a couple weeks ago, and your buddy from uh, the one guy. <laughs> there's a guy out there in the world that's just smarter than everybody and best friends with everybody and proud of himself always. <laughs> and he always has stuff to say. The, 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 he whose name we don't speak of. Was was just Vol- don't like need Voldemort. To. <laughs> just, just not interested. <laughs> just never interested. I wish Voldemort had a hockey blog, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, how how good is Chris Stewart? Seriously, I'm loving him right now. I mean, I th- I think he was a big name. I mean, if 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 we're thinking about like who's a big name to get at the trade deadline, and the Wild were in on a big name, then I would say Chris Stewart would be the guy. He's he's going to be probably the top free agent if he can have a good little run here, score some goals, contribute in the playoffs with his big body and skill. It's I'm, really interesting to talk about Chris Stewart because uh, in Buffalo he was just doing so poorly in Buffalo, and he wasn't mailed he it wasn't, in. Yeah, he mailed it in. But it even is. when he was in St. Louis, like uh, when you look at his underlying numbers, like he wasn't he wasn't that great there either. But he's come to the Wild and he skated with Miko Koivu. And, and unlike other wingers, cough cough, Thomas Vanek, um, he hasn't really dragged down Koivu. He's he's been able to uh, to keep up with him. So I I've been pleasantly surprised with how well he's done so far. I would, and I'll say this. I mean, it, it might be a bold statement, but I I'm absolutely convinced that Dubnik and Stewart will sign here next year because. Because of the reasons that they fit, and they're happy with their roles here, and they're not having to worry about what am I doing, where am I going, and that sort of thing. Just because Dubnik fits for obvious reasons, Stewart, obviously, Stewart fits for obvious reasons that we don't have anybody that has skill and toughness yeah. right now, right. and that even if they have size, they're not willing to play to that size. Like I mean, Coyle. Coyle. Or who, I mean, who, who Nino mixes it up, though. I mean, Nino mixes it up in front of the net, but he's not going to drop the gloves if somebody takes liberties. That's Somebody true. takes liberties. Okay, what happens when Ryan Carter comes back? Ryan Carter is another – he's a Brodziak replacement. So, I mean, if you want to talk about next year, okay, if you want to go back farther. What about, what about the end of this year? It's going to get crowded. Well, Carter will come back, but he'll be replaced Brodziak. Yeah, because, who's playing well and had a big goal Because Carter, because Carter can or play – Or he won't. I mean, Brodziak's played very well, yeah. and he has a role that he plays. He plays he's, he's been very good on the on the penalty kill, and I think Ryan Carter – Kid, maybe he's eased in, but maybe he also, he also plays well on the bar, maybe bar, Ryan bar, Carter. Kill, I think Howla's pot is more in jeopardy than Brodzik. Yeah, yes. that's what I was gonna say. Maybe Ryan Carter fills in for Howla if Howla doesn't continue to show that. But Howla's a penalty killer, and Howla's got speed. But if you know, if if he's not so focused Carter. on what he's Carter trying to accomplish, yeah, but uh, Brodzik is not, is he? I, I'll I, take I, youth and Howla over uh, over that sort of veteran experience with limited upside in yeah. Carter any day, though. I think it would be a mistake to let. Ago for Brock, well, especially uh, when you You're saw not go, but I mean, as far as no. playing time. But yeah, but you saw last year what Howlett can do in terms of a racing, a, 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 a dynamic offensive performer on the other team. So I, McKinnon, I, think, yeah. I think I think they want him around just in case that kind of situation pops up. And I and I think the conversation is relevant, and I also think that that's why I, this isn't a mirage. I mean, th- this is a, the most deep wild team, talent wise, and also ability to match up wise. So. You, you have you have a, a fourth line that's going to feature Bergenheim. It's going to feature Howla. It's going to feature Brodziak. It's going to feature Ryan Carter. And probably um, nobody's rooting for Matt Cook to come back, even though he's such a great locker room guy, just because there's just no space in that lineup. I mean, you, you don't want a guy to get hurt. You don't want to pull any of those guys out of there. Even if you look at the defense pairings, like the, the, the pairing that I root for the most on the third would, would be the two young guys in Folan and Dumba. But th- the reality is Folan will probably come out for Leopold, and Prosser is probably going to be Prosser's back. hurt, though. Prosser's out for a couple weeks. Yeah, and that was a vicious hit. Nice yeah. hip check. And Prosser will probably fade into the distance. I mean, you know, his future is probably he not here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, as he, as he should. That's what we thought last well, year, though. But when is Scandella back? True. 
Scandella, uh, he's, he's skated, ready. He's, he's skated based. today. He won't play tomorrow. And then they were talking about uh, maybe next week that he'll be back. And then you're also going to get Ryan Carter back in the next week and a half or so. And what are your guys' early impressions on the return on Leopold? Uh, I, I, I like that Leopold wants to be here. I like Leopold more than I like Prosser. I would like the third pairing eventually to be the two young kids or a combination of Dumbo with um, either Suter or Dumbo with Scandella and mix it up. I, I'd like Brodine and Folan to play together some because I think that they are, are very complimentary. Um, you know, I think the, the top six is Ryan Suter with either Brodine or Spurgeon, and then you have Scandella, Dumba, and Folan all in the mix, and that's your, your best, six best defensemen. Leopold's good depth, but yeah, depth. I mean, I would say he's a depth guy going forward as well. As far as another guy that sticks with the club, he's going to be a, a depth guy that replaces a Prosser. Um, a stoner. They, they give, well, I, mean, I don't even want to mention him because, it, I mean. He was I being mean, salty. He, the, he was the, being best, salty. The, the best is he pulls, he pulls a 180 when he's called out about his comments. And then, and then uh, you know. It, and then he fights a guy. He when, fights a guy 30 seconds in because he's, he's salty because he got when called he's, on And it. when he's questioned about it. But, yeah. it, 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 I mean, he, he knows that what he said wasn't right. And that, I mean, it, he had no no right to that ice time over Suter. I mean, I don't care how long it has been. But. I mean, when you're handing pucks over, you know, to uh, to Marion Hosa and he goes in and, and goes top shelf, sure. you're going to need to sit your ass on the bench for a while. With his I, ability to hand the puck to Hosa, you'd be, I was surprised he didn't become a Blackhawk. <laughs> <laughs> well, well and, and the fact that, I mean, he makes such good breakout passes just to the wrong team. How about how about uh, the, the Stones uh, on, on Dumba right now? I mean, like, yeah. I mean, I know they were down by a goal in the third last night, but there's a play where, I mean, he he jumped up in support of the, of the rush. I mean, he wasn't leading the rush. He jumped up in support of the rush, uh, like, basically to try to turn it into a three-on-two, where, I mean, he did get caught deep. And, I mean, they went the other way with numbers. I mean, it's – in the NHL, I know you're down a goal at this point, but still in the NHL, if you're a defenseman and you're going to get caught like that, you better typically be the guy carrying the mail, not just jumping up in support. But he's not – he is not afraid of anything. I can tell you what, that that just shows the evolution of what he – like the strides he's made because earlier in the season I think he was so afraid of his shadow that he would never do the, the things that he knows how to do. And that's it. I mean, right. that's rushing the puck. That's 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 dropping those those bombs that are hurting our own goaltender, and, you know, in, yeah, in, yeah. In, in practice that uh, – I mean – I kind of made a joke to somebody at work today about like, I'm like, well, he didn't he didn't pick a spot. Rennie got out of the way because yeah. he didn't want to basically get his arm broken. Well, he got he made excuse me he made the diagonal pass to Preci to kind of spring it, and it's you know you're playing four and four in NHL in overtime, so you've got to be a little a little conscious, you know, if you're a defenseman. But he made the play to Preci, and then he is right up there to support him. I mean, he supported the puck perfectly on that. He's right behind him, and he gets a little, you know, Preci comes up the right wing. You know, creates a little space, and then there's a little dead spot right behind him, and Doom was right there for well, the Well, you drop. need that because that's what, like Spurgeon S qualities is like. But that. that's that's I boss mean, for a rookie in overtime. But here, here, anybody I know, Tony and I share just a, a mutual admiration for Dumba and have since he's been drafted. Well, I will have him. Dumba's babies someday. He will have Dumba's right, babies. I'm freaked out. It's and I will, that, it's not that kind of bar. And I would watch probably, you know. I'm no, the wrong. Like Jesus Christ! Like so, an, is it like an Arnold Schwarzenegger here, movie? What, what just happened? The thing we're that, tolerant. We're a tolerant blogosphere. Oh yeah, sure. The thing, that, the thing that you should know about Dumba is that the, when they when they made that pick over Jacob Truba over Derek Pouliot, they were they were reaching for these genius moments. They were reaching for the dynamic um, offensive ability. They were reaching for a, a kid that can go end to end with the puck. That's willing to mix it up. That that is is just an aggressive. Um, get under your skin type of open open ice hitter, and that's a lot of the stuff that we saw in the, in the prospect camps before he actually made it to the NHL. And he, I mean, he was the best player on that Red Deer team. Um, and Chuck Fletcher and, and Brent Flair are very savvy with regard to player development. In I, got, my opinion. I got I got a man crush on Brett Flair. I'll, I'll admit it. And on who? And, and, on Brett Flair. He, oh. I mean, he brought us Brodeen. Prospect Yoda, I mean, he's, he's, basically. He, the, guy, the guy just finds gems. It's ridiculous. And so what what happens is when, when Dumba uh, gets his entry-level uh, contract activated last year because he played 13 games, he, he goes to Team Canada, he has a so-so tournament, and then what they did was they forced a trade from Red Deer to Portland, and then he goes and plays on a team that has a chance to go for the Memorial Cup, which is basically the equivalent to the, to the Stanley Cup in Canadian Juniors. And he ends up outshining a Derek Pouli out there, and he ends up being a point-of-game player, and all of this has helped him to gain the confidence to become the Dumbo we see. 
genius moments. And I'll be I'll I'll be the opposite of what I normally am and gush about his intangibles. He just seems to play with so much like infectious joy in his game, and he, he's just made wild games so much more fun to watch. I, I really really can't speak well enough about him. And he punched a Sedin. He punches a different guys. Chris Stewart <laughs> is like his big brother. He wants to in the mix, and this is this is just changed. He fought Jerome Aginla. He was his childhood hero. Yes. Yes, when you fight your childhood hero, no hesitation, that's a genius moment. Yeah. I, I mean, they, if Wild fans aren't in love with this kid, then they just don't understand. Like, you can't have it both ways. You can't be like, Ryan Suter is the most boring defensive player in the entire... He All he does is shoot, flip, wrist shot, dump offs, but then you... Then not then you can't not embrace Dumba and love everything about this kid. He's like he's like PK Subban light, and he all he wants to do is bounce around, hit people, shoot the puck, and just be in the mix. Man. And his shot is weird. Like I've growing up playing defense, like I can tell you, like the fact that he can release a shot with that that little of a it's of compact. Basic, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. I mean, yeah. they always taught us growing up that you don't have to get the big windmill shot, I and mean, you don't have to bring your stick back like all the way. You know, Straight up to twelve yeah. o'clock yeah, yeah. to get your to get some momentum. He doesn't even bring it past like nine o'clock. Yeah, it's very I compact. Mean, it's it's re and he gets that much power. He probably, has one, he probably has a real short golf swing too. Yeah, you just see one of those guys who just steps up to the tee, basically takes it back to his waist, and then hits it three fifty. I mean, on, on that game winner, he crushed Rini's soul before he even had a chance to react. It fluttered past him. His life was it was just over. He skated you did, off you did, the chain. You did see the reaction in his face. He's like, well, that went in. <laughs> <All right. laughs> he started skating away. I'm like, like, wow, you knew it that fast that like yeah. it was in. Like, you didn't even care. Like, eh, do, do, do. like, back to the bench. Hey, they, they, let's take a look at the week. It's kind of an interesting week coming up. They got home games coming up against Washington. Uh, I would assume Ovechkin will play this time. He did not when the squads uh, faced off in Washington last week. He was too scared of Dumba. And then we've got, and then we've got, <laughs> then we got St. Louis at home Saturday. And I know the, the Wild just uh, stole stole two from St. Louis. Uh, but uh, this is still a team that uh, typically, uh, traditionally, has the Wilds number. Monday, you get Toronto. I believe uh, the, the thug that is uh, Kadri will be out for that game. He will be. He got suspended for four games um, after the hit on Monday. Yeah, so, so you won't have to worry about him. And I then, like Kadri, too. But, I, I don't know why I like that guy. I just do. But then back-to-back. -back. I think he hurt both. Granlin and Baxter oh, in the same game. He's, yeah, a, he's jerk. a thug. He's no, a he's a thug. jerk. I know, but I think he's good at hockey. But it, but it's it, not like we can like butt in him with the stick. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, but then you get a back to back after you play at Toronto. You go to the Islanders, a team that has had a fantastic year that might maybe showing some signs of going the wrong way a little bit. Finally, and a team that's uh, always interesting for uh, to, for us to play against from a fans' perspective because they are so Minnesota centric and the roster. It's outrageous how Minnesotan that Islanders team is. They got some injuries on that Islanders team now they too. Do. I mean, well, so I, 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 still yeah, out. I, yep. And I think that I mean that back to back is it, any other time that I would say that back to back is like, eh, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm pretty confident that we're going to go into that back to back and, and be pretty strong. They yeah. have a wild killer on that uh, Islanders team named Nick Letty too. He's pretty. Uh, He's all right. He's pretty Inside? wide, wild killer. I'm over it. Like everybody else should be too. Yeah, it's time. It oh, is. I'm all, not. all you I'm listeners, not. all there need to get over it. Well, it was it was a horrific. Where's that? Trade, where's but, that soundbite? But he's done. He's done. He's done. He's done so many, so many good things since then. That that's is, a puffy soundbite. Yeah. Get over it. Yeah, it is. You're right. It is. It is. That's. I should have an intellectual property on that one. Damn straight. Yeah. So, you, you, so a little background story. Uh, uh, I, I mentioned that Nick Letty's a, a wild killer. He ends up uh, as like a healthy scratch for Chicago. The hockey world and this guys, rightfully so, are just savaging me on Twitter. And then after the fact, he he, he has this like genius moment out there in in, in uh, Long Island, and, and you know he earns like a seven year contract. I've done I've done a total 180 on Nick Letty. I was on that whole like oh get over it. He's not that good train, and then um, and then yeah, this year like wow. And granted, any anybody that plays with Joe uh, with uh, Tavares and, and and his line, they're going to be productive. I mean, yeah, but you got to be doing something right at the same time, and he definitely is. Well, yeah, you don't get put on that line for charity. Uh, but uh, a couple of items in closing. Do not forget the NCHC Frozen Faceoff. It is this weekend. It is the twentieth and twenty first. It's at Target Center. Uh, we'll. Uh, I don't know. If I haven't asked you guys. Uh, you're more than welcome to join. Uh, I've got a show Friday afternoon. Uh, right across from Kieran's. It's going to be a hockey-centric show. You're out walking a beat. You're your flat foot. We get it. Uh, Scott, now you're probably you know closing deals. I know you're a big shot sales manager kind of a guy. But uh, you're obviously you're, you're both welcome. Uh, we'll maybe we'll see. I, I would I would not, love to be there. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to be there on uh, Saturday during the day, but maybe Friday night. But people got to check it out. AXS T I one eight 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 T A X. Jesus Christ. 
one eight 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 nine axstx ix for tickets. That's right, eight 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 nine axstx. That's how it goes. That's, I swear to God, that's the number. <laughs> Thank you to Tony Abbott, Hockey Wilderness, for being here. We yes. really appreciate it. Pubcast. He is, he is the Pubcast. narrative Pubcast. slayer Pubcast. on Twitter. Pubcast. The narrative Pubcast slayer. Pubcast is up next. I got these guys from uh, Wild Wednesday joining me. Perfect.